It's that I, I kind of, I'm afraid I was laughing when I read it, which is, you know, I was a former Tory MP. I, maybe it's just a bit of despair. Uh, is that changing Tory leader, this is the conclusion of the poll, could result in even larger Labour landslide. Apparently all the front-running candidates, you know, Kemi Badenoch and so on and so on, except for Penny Morden, showed an ever-growing lead for Labour. And I think Penny Morden kind of slightly stifled it by 1%. And meanwhile, at the same time, I think there's a fascinating poll uh, to reform, uh, about reform, which shows that they are now head, ahead of the Tories amongst male voters. Uh, and overall, I think they're within something like four points overall of voting intention uh, f between Conservatives and Labour. I mean, uh, sorry, Conservatives and Reform. I mean, just a caveat here, a little bit of a spoiler alert, way ahead of them both is, of course, the Labour Party. Here to join me and uh, just discuss these to put some facts uh, and assessment of those polls, Peter Kellner, political commentator and pollster, who's also, of course, former president of YouGov. Peter, welcome. Good afternoon, Nick. So, I, I mean, you may have heard me so say, I, I read the thing about the leaders and changing leaders and I just yeah. sort of laughed. It was, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's all over for the Conservatives, isn't it? I know polls are meant to be snapshots, but you can't ignore the trend, can you? That's right. I would be astonished if this time next year, Keir Starmer isn't Prime Minister and Rishi Sunak is packing his bags for California. Um, it, it seems short of something none of us can remotely predict. I can't see any way back for the Conservatives. Uh, the idea, uh, one, one, one thing when I was reading the idea of changing leader is I thought it was obviously a good idea to say, look, would Kemi Badenoch improve chances? We all remember those polls when Theresa May was Prime Minister and there'd be the second line if Boris Johnson was Prime Minister and there was a huge difference and it you know, led to the inevitable. Um, has the question been asked, would any uh, any change to the Tory leadership make any difference at all? Uh, or, or even the second question, um, is, is, is it, are we even being listened to? Are the Conservatives, rather, even being listened to? Um, I don't know if that particular question has been asked, but, but Nick, let me give you um, the results of a, of a different question, but I think it illuminates the same point. Um, and you, Gov, regularly track what people think of the party leaders and the parties themselves. And then later, so let me just read out two figures to you. Is Rishi Sunak competent? Just 29% say he is. That's not good. Is the Conservative Party competent? Just 14% say it is. There's the problem. The, the, the failing of the Conservative Party is the party. Not so much its leader. Leader, you know, and, and and you go back in history. You know, when Margaret Thatcher in the end was deposed, the polls showed that if if she was deposed, Michael Heseltine or John Major took over, Conservatives would win. With her, they'd lose. She was the problem at that moment. The Conservative Party saw that and they defenestrated her. Today, it's the Conservative Party that's the problem. Uh, now, how much of that is to do with the rise of an alternative Conservative vote, which of course is reform? Because if there was no alternative, uh, we might expect to see perhaps different polling between the two parties. Would that be fair to say? I think that's right. Uh, I've been looking at uh, the reforms vote and comparing it with UKIP 10 years ago. UKIP 10 years ago, it, its voters, they were simply anti-establishment. They'd previously been Tory or Labour or Liberal Democrat. They came from all over the place. Their common feature was they were anti-establishment. Reform's vote is completely different. Reform's vote is almost completely former Conservatives, and they are to the right of the Conservative Party. This is a right-wing insurgency. So over the last six months, the Conservatives have come down, reform has gone up. You know, that's the shift. And so the Conservatives have a real problem. Um, do they say, right, in order to get reform voters back, we've got to move to the right. Or do they say, hang on, if we move to the right, there are a lot of Tory voters who are slightly more centrist, um, not so nationalist, not so anti-immigrant. Are we in danger of lo losing them if we move to the right? So the Tories, I think, 
have a real dilemma. I'm not quite sure I see how they solve it. So we, if you look at polling for the Liberal Democrats nationally and that overall voting intention figure, which I know is, 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 is there's a lot of detail beneath it, they're not doing very well. But what do we know about what they're doing in, in the blue wall, the, 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 the big seats where Chancellor Jeremy Hunt is, for example? I will, well, this is really interesting, Nick. At the moment, the Liberal Democrats are averaging around 10% in the polls, Reform are averaging around 12% in the polls. So at the moment, there's slightly more Reform voters than Lib Dem voters. If that were the national vote on election day, I think Reform would have either zero or one MPs. The Liberal Democrats could easily have 30 or 40. And the reason is the Reform vote is spread all over the place, whereas the Liberal Democrats are increasingly concentrating their vote where they have a chance of winning, including the Blue Wall. And some of the Blue Wall polls show them gaining ground. One of the most curious things, Nick, we've had a lot of by-elections in the last couple of years. And with one exception, in every single by-election, the Liberal Democrats have either won the seat or got less than 10%. So both the Liberal Democrats are picking up voters in large numbers where they have a real chance of winning, and they're picking up hardly any votes where they've got no chance. So if you can if you look at that 10% nationally, if that 10% is concentrated in let's say 60 or 100 seats, they could get a lot of votes mm. and win a fair number of them. Reform are nowhere near that um, ability to target their support or to achieve targeted support and win seats under our present system. One of the debates I have here uh, with many uh, many callers, in fact. You want to join this conversation on polling? Do on 0344 499 1000. But this question often winds people up and they end up not blaming me, they end up blaming pollsters because I ask what are the, the drivers to vote? We, we now know what they think of the government and maybe what voting intention is. But um, a lot of people believe the number one issue is immigration. Uh, I push back a bit and say, look, I know it's very important to, to people and groups of people, but I still think it's it's effectively cost of living. How well am I doing? Have I got enough cash, et cetera, the state of the, the economy? Um, tell me, what are the key drivers to vote that we should be looking out for? Right. If you look at the country as a whole, it's the economy and health. Uh, they vie for first place. They're first and second in, in whatever order. And that's true of voters in most parties except for reform voters. Reform voters overwhelmingly put immigration top. Non-reform voters put immigration third or fourth or, 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 or fifth. So uh, immigration is certainly a driver of the votes the Tories are losing, but it's much less important to everybody else. So that perhaps explains, and um, please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, that, that why if you ask nationally what the key issues are, you find immigration is around 22% uh, uh, registered by most people, 20, 22%, and comes in at about fourth as a national issue. Is it because, if you like, using the wrong word here, but those interested and uh, worried about immigration have migrated to reform from every other party? I, I also have migrated. Sometimes pollsters ask a pair of questions, I think it's very useful. Which are the biggest issues or the biggest problems facing the country? And then which are the biggest problems facing your area? And normally you'll find that immigration is one of those issues which scores more highly, 20, 25, 30%, as a problem for the country, but rather lower when people are asked what are the problems in your area? And indeed, some of the polling that's been done over the years show that some of the biggest dislike of immigrants is in places throughout Britain, which have the fewest immigrants locally. Mm. So mm. in London, which is a much more multicultural um, city of people all over the world, immigration is, is less of an issue than it is, say, in parts of the Red Wall Industrial North, where there are far fewer uh, well, immigrants. That's presumably because if you've got a large population of first and second generation migrants, they're not worried about immigration, so it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a, a key issue to vote, I presume. No, no, but 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 there aren't enough of them to completely distort the figures. White voters in those areas are also less concerned so, um, about immigration uh, than than white voters are. Let us say in the red wall seats. Fair enough. So uh, let me just um, draw on your maths there a little bit. Final question, if I may. You you were saying that nationally, maybe twenty five, even more percent 
uh, will list immigration as a key issue, but when it comes to a local area, it may not be an issue, and I, under, I understand that. Does that mean if, if reform are now polling on 19%, there's more people they could still win who think of it as a key national issue, uh, driving them potentially above 20% and beyond? It's possible. Now, my, um, what we know from the polling is that, uh, that Nigel Farage has a reach uh, that hardly any other politician, any other party has. Um, people who voted Tory, one poll I looked at a month or two ago, showed that amongst people who voted Conservative in 2019, they like um, Nigel Farage more than they like Rishi Sunak. Um, and that's pretty devastating. So my, my guess is one of two things will happen between now and the election. Either Nigel Farage will come back and play a big frontline role in the election, in which case I think the Tories are in desperate trouble and reform will do pretty well. The other possibility is Nigel Farage decides he's more interested in America, in Trump, in, in, in doing his broadcasting and the rest of it, and does not play a big role in Britain, in which case I think the reform vote will to some extent be squeezed and the Tories will be able to pull back at least some of those voters. So. Um, if you want me to guess what's going to happen in the next election, tell me what you think is going to happen to Nigel Farage, and I'll give you an answer. So, yet again, he still dominates uh, British politics. Listen, Peter Kellner, thank you very much indeed for that tour de force through the implications of the polls.